Welcome to the group exhibit of hydrogen fuel cells and batteries here at the Hanover Fair. Today is one of the interesting days here at the Hanover Fair, last, uh, like it was yesterday and it will be tomorrow too. So what do we have right now? Um, it is uh, a great, great pleasure for me to see the director for business development from the company Gina, Mr. Hector Maza. Thank you. Hector, hi. Nice to meet you. Take a place, please. Thank you. Oh, you brought some parcels here. Well, uh, people like to see things sometimes, so I figure I would bring some uh, little souvenir for you. Oh, thank you very much. Looks powerful. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit. Well, uh, we got the um, big word megawatt PEM electrolysis. Where yeah. and why? This is not it. <laughs> is it say, not? This is not, okay. no. <laughs> it was a little heavy to carry all the way over here, so I decided to just bring you a sample of what we do in space or in laboratory hydrogen, which is one of the simple cells that, that we have carried for over 12 years now yeah. and uh, produce you know, a couple of liters a minute of hydrogen. Uh, the PEM electrolyzer, where and why? I think uh, everybody likes to talk about big power. So uh, eventually, we're all going to go there and probably all of us together cannot feed enough for what's on the other side of the hall with our friends from uh, the wind industry or even the solar industry. So the, the reason to go to big power, it's, it's obvious. We need to shift the energy to when it's needed. Not necessarily at 2, 3 in the morning, but maybe some other time. Or not depending on the sun shining or not. Yeah, so uh, shifting energy is getting to the megawatt. Uh, yes. megawatt. But uh, your company is not only... Um, yeah, well, if you look at the usual company, uh, bringing with hydrogen fuel cells, um, batteries, themes, there are several old companies and a lot of young companies everywhere, yes. developing new technology, getting into the theme, coming out of the laboratory, but yeah. you don't. No. Uh, <laughs> we are we're maybe a young company, but for, for this industry, we're probably a very old company. We've been around for 40 years. So we, we have our... Our beginnings back in the days of GE, and uh, that's when the Guinea got formed in the, in the uh, 1970s. And um, we've been uh, producing exclusively PEM technology since then. We're an electrochemistry powerhouse. We, we do all our research, and we did a lot of research for the first 30 years um, for the U.S. government and other things. But uh, we went from very, very small cells, so one centimeter squared all the way down uh, to uh, a megawatt uh, PEM electrolyzer, which is what we're working on now. So we, we got a lot of audience here. I see someone is writing a little bit and uh, looking for information mat material, searching eye contact with us. Sure. Means um, if you got some questions to Mr. Maza, not to me, I can't answer them. He's the guy. <laughs> so if you got some questions, please raise your hand. I'm the guy with the microphone. I get to you and you can post a question, for example. Thank you. I've seen he's calling the girl, not us. <laughs> um, okay. The, what makes it so successful? You, you've been 40 years at the market, so uh, you've got a plan and a concept that, yes. that works. Well, um, I think it's how do you define, how do you define success? In our, in our business, uh, it's, it's very hard to judge. Um, we have, uh, uh, for example, our company, which is a profitable company, it has been profitable for all single 40 years of, uh, of our existence, where, um, you know, in this industry, it's very difficult to do that. Most companies don't bring a profit till till sometime in the future and uh, this is a sentence I didn't hear that often here on the yeah. stage <laughs> That's right. being uh, depending on uh, subsidies from the state this is not your kind of theme no. policy no 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 uh, as you know in the US we have a, a beautiful thing called fracking that uh, makes it very difficult to compete with uh, in Europe uh, you have a much more an incentive to go green and go green quickly uh, therefore, there's a lot of uh, incentives here in Europe and, and in some other countries as well where they would like to see this industry succeed. We could not base ourselves just on uh, government policy. We would have to be successful by ourselves. So what we decided to do is every single business we do, we have to make a small profit, but we have to make a profit. We cannot operate with losses year after year after year. That's something we can just can't do. So uh, your kind of research and development is yeah. based on being profitable. Absolutely, uh, but it was not, at the beginning it was mostly research and development, and then it evolved into commercial products. Yeah, so what are your products then? You brought something here, yes. and what else? Uh, for example, this is uh, something that uh, was developed specifically for NASA back in the days. Uh, as you know, NASA has the money to spend in the best technology. They don't care what it costs, they care about 
uh, what's going to work and what's going to be light and small and, 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 and the highest efficiency. So we developed under this uh, platform very effi efficient electrolyzers that then got uh, transported into other uh, areas, for example, lab hydrogen. Many people here who have been in the laboratory would go into a, uh, a lab and see hydrogen use in gas uh, chromatography or LCMS or something like that, and they need to get their hydrogen somehow. So either they get it in cylinders by our friends, the, gas, the biggest gas companies, or they can generate it on site. So we sell to OEMs in this industry for over 10 years now. And okay. uh, they have a major participation in this. Uh, then this being a platform, you can always scale this up as many layers as you want, and you can go into other applications like backup power, you can go into uh, eventually larger uh, active areas, and eventually you get to the, to the big megawatt scale. So uh, this is one part of uh, your successful story. You, you told me something about sensors. I found it very funny because... Uh, <laughs> Um, we keep on getting smaller and smaller, right? Yeah, well, right. Uh, you've got the big ones and the small ones. So, so, yeah. so Guinea is all about electrochemistry, uh, always based in PEM technology, so proton exchange membrane. We have not only uh, electrolyzers, but we also have the fuel cell side of things. So within fuel cells, we created a tiny fuel cell that is a transdermal alcohol sensor. So you can put it on your skin, uh, and it could sense how much ethanol is coming out of your skin, and that's the fuel for the fuel cell. So by a, cor a simple correlation, we can say you have a 0 0.05 or 0 0.08 alcohol in your blood, and we were very successful selling that technology in the U.S. to law enforcement applications. So and uh, with this kind of sensor, I can uh, control if I could lose my driver license or not? Yeah, you <laughs> could actually have it in, in embedded in your watch, for example, or in a, or in a wristband, like uh, it's very popular these days with consumer electronics. Um, but it, it, is, it is a very good... Uh, way to demonstrate how technology can scale up and down very easily when you have the right technology. So um, the right technology in scaling means um, that there, well, you see a kind of market for that, right? Absolutely. So uh, if there is a market for that, what kind of market do you see for your company? So in, in the sensor side, for example, we have uh, 40 or 50 different analytes we can actually sense with the fuel cell technologies. And they're very specific per uh, type of molecule you're trying to sense. It could be in, in liquid, it could be in gas. But when we try to scale that up and we start going into not only liquid but gas form, you go into electrolyzers which are fed with water or you go into electrolyzers that could be fed with uh, vapor water. Therefore, you take out part of the process out of the equation. For example, in space applications or underwater applications like uh, uh, defense applications, we can actually go into uh, places where most electrolyzers have never been. We can take out the purification of the water needed for this electrolyzer, and we can actually just use the vapor, which contains m far less uh, impurities, and therefore uh, go into something we call the static feed and vapor feed technologies. So but that sounds like we can do everything with PEM technology. No, 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 we cannot do everything, but certainly there's, there's, a, there's a variety of applications that we can go into. The so major markets yeah. that we see today obviously are basically founded on uh, older technologies, whether it's alkaline or PEM technology, and they usually are looking at liquid electrolyzers or using uh, uh, your, your water and splitting it, hydrogen and oxygen. That is probably one of the biggest markets coming on, and they have uh, vertical markets that we can address, whether it's uh, in the power to gas or the mobility or the industrial markets. Those are the typical ones that everybody would like to get into, but the, the existing market is still very small, which is the industrial market, uh, growing every day, of course. Well, uh, thinking about that, um, could you name some limits of the technology? Of course, you go to the limits. Yeah, of course. Uh, every technology has pros and cons. Uh, we have uh, uh, competing technologies, and uh, in our technology, the good and the bad is, is, is obvious. You have limits uh, in terms of temperature pressure, differential pressure, and, and uh, current density. So what we try to do at Guinea, what we have been doing for the last many, many years in research is test where the limits are for PEM. So um, we count with 20% uh, of, our, of our workforce are PhDs in electrochemistry, physics, and, and, and chemistry. And, and we dedicate those scientists to go after what is the limit. Pretty much like you have here with companies in, in research and development in Germany. So we go to the, to the limits of temperature, pressure. Differential pressure is a big thing. That differentiates our technology from other technologies where they have to normally work at balanced pressure. Otherwise, the member ruptures. Ours doesn't. We have developed something called DSM. Why, why doesn't your member uh, uh, Why doesn't it? Um, well, it works, but why doesn't it go just in comparison to, 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 to other companies or membranes? Why does your membrane don't burn through. Well, uh, it's, it's quite simple. The thinner the membrane, the better performance you get, but the more risk you have of having a piercing. Now, in, uh, in PEM, you can go much, much thinner, but the problem with PEM is it's very flimsy, and you can pierce it very easily. 
Now, we have developed a technology called DSM, which is dimensionally stable membrane. We support the membrane w artificially with a, with a polymer, and that actually allows us to create a differential pressure between the hydrogen and the oxygen side. A lot of people don't like to deal with oxygen at high pressure. It's, it's very dangerous. Not only that, but the, at the end of the day, you have to increase your cost on both sides of the equation, not just on the hydrogen side, but also on the oxygen side. Uh, when you're going downstream with oxygen at high pressure, you're increasing the, the balance of plant itself tremendously. What we have done is we can do oxygen at one bar and hydrogen at 50 bar. And then you can go directly into some applications without need of a compressor. Compressors for hydrogen are traditionally breaking uh, every now and then, and they're very costly to maintain. And they're also, every time you have a breaking, a breakdown because of a compressor, you have to stop your plant and then go repair it and so on. So we try to avoid having moving parts as much as possible. Well, I think uh, it sounds for the audience like you invented a kind of technology or you're using a kind of uh, technology that brings a product upon the other ones. So for me is the question, you're successful now for 40 years in this direction. Yeah. Well, it sounds for me world leading. Uh, I would say technology wise, we're definitely world leading. I don't, I don't th see any other technology today which has invested as much money as we have with partners, uh, collaborations with General Motors, with Department of Energy, Department of Defense. Definitely, I think we have invested the most amount of money into the technology and made it uh, what it is today, a leading technology. So, uh, we are not that successful yet on the commercial side. The commercial side, I see other companies having uh, more brand recognition out there, and that's why we attend to these kind of fairs now. We decided two years ago, it's time to go to the market and tell them what we have accomplished and how low we can bring the cost down. So recently we've done a 70% reduction in the PEM cost from where it was uh, just a couple of years ago to where it is today. We plan to do another 70% reduction in the next five years. So totally we're going to talking about a 90% reduction in cost of PEM. And we're doing uh, great advances not only in the current density that we can achieve, the differential pressure, but also the purity of the gas that comes out of it and the flexibility of the system. As you well know, other technologies are not capable to ramp up fast enough and drop down when the wind stops blowing, for example, or the sun is not shining. Our technology can ramp up and down in milliseconds, from zero to 100 and back it down. still survive for a longer yeah, time. Yeah, of course, of course, yes. Plus, because you're not dealing with anything other than water, you can uh, think of a much smaller system. At the same time, when you have a higher current density like we do today, maybe 10 times higher than the competitors, then you can really reduce the size of this, of this uh, overall system and go into mobility and put it in a small European gas station and uh, other places where uh, you pay a premium for, for size. Well, stay for a short time at the Megawatt project. Yes. Uh, the Megawatt project was something that uh, we uh, uh, decided to go into uh, in, in, in the past as we saw evidence of the need for it. So we talked to wind companies, we talked to uh, uh, everybody that wants to shift power and we realized you can't do it with kilowatts, we have to go with, with megawatts. So are we really going to propose to put 20 stacks to make one megawatt? It's not viable. You can't make it uh, feasible and price-wise and cost-wise to, to make it reasonable. So what we decided to do is basically concentrate into stacks that would be able to hold one megawatt in a single stack and then you can do multiple stacks to, for example, for a wind farm of 40 megawatt or 60 megawatt. So that's where we're headed today and that's what we are displaying in our booth. I couldn't carry that, but uh, you're more than welcome to come over to see it. Uh, this is booth uh, D76, where yes. you exactly yep. uh, pronounce here uh, your material. Yep. Um, uh, looking at uh, the audience, just any questions right now for the development of the technology which you like to share with the rest of the audience? So, and I don't see no hands. Do you yeah. one? <laughs> Do you <laughs> see one? No, ah, no. Right. Yeah. Well, thanks for your talk. Actually, you said. Uh, a highly stable two-dimensional membrane. Yeah. So this is a nephion membrane. You yeah. developed another surface of polymer membrane to give stability to nephion, or it's a different membrane that you have generated? We use membranes like nephion or nephion, and we support them. So the membrane is still uh, the typical nephion-like molecule, and inside of it, we support it with another polymer. Uh, we treat our membranes, of course we do, we treat uh, everything into the, we started from the membrane all the way up to the stack and then to the system. So our chemistry may be a little bit different than other technologies out here within PEM. So this polymers or what type of surface, whether it is hydrophilic nature or hydrophobic nature? The, the nature of them is they allow the flow of water 
through. Um, they are, if you want to call it uh, hydrophilic, you can think of them that way. And, uh, but in the end, it, they're there to support the membrane. The membrane, as you know, for example, Nafion, you mentioned, when you, when you get it wet, and it has to be wet because wet is wonderful, uh, it expands in different directions, a different size, so X, Y, Z axis in different proportions. That's very difficult to control. And when you start pressurizing on one side with 40, 50 bar, and the other side is not supported, and you go into almost a vacuum, but essentially into one bar, you can pierce through that membrane very, very quickly. And what happens when you have a piercing of a membrane is uh, the most undesirable event when you have a quick uh, mixture of oxygen and hydrogen uncontrollable. And one more question. Yes. Uh, you, also, uh, you also work on uh, developed materials for anode and cathode or it's Absolutely. All okay, Absolutely. So, uh, you, you have able to replace the plantinum or uh, it's a different material? To, to replace the plantinum? Uh, you mean the catalyst, whether it's anode or cathode? Catalyst. We, we have obviously we, we do work on the anode, the cathode, and the membrane themselves, and that's where all our chemistry and I call it the Ginner magic comes in. Uh, people in general know the basics of a, a PEM membrane or know the basics of the anode and cathode, but we go every step to reduce the number of components into those into those uh, subcomponents of the system to make it simpler and cheaper. That's part of how we've been able to reduce the cost in the last 10 years, and we're planning to reduce it even further in the next five years. Uh, we do have, uh, of course, chemistry that I'm not allowed to share out loud. We can always talk about uh, our booth if you are more interested into, and, uh, and we can go into great detail to see how we make the life of this product also expand. Typically, you have uh, uh, the, the feel that you need to go to 30,000, 40,000 hours. We have ways to measure uh, the breakdown of that polymer to see when is it going to fail. So we can tell with a great de degree of certainty our, our stacks are good for 60,000 hours or 100,000 hours, but we run them 30,000. And we, we don't run them 1,000 hours and then extrapolate out to 30. We run them for a good 20, 30,000 hours and then we say, yes, with these fl uh, fluoride release levels, we know that in 60,000 or 70,000 hours, most likely we're going to have a piercing of the membrane. Okay. So y you also talked about water splitting also, if I'm correct. Excuse me? You, you talked about water splitting also, uh, water yeah, splitting yeah. to hydrogen. So yeah. are you integrating uh, the water splitting with your fuel technology? I mean, the water splitting hydrogen could be used as a fuel for your fuel technology, or hydrogen comes from, uh, from other sources? No, no, no. Obviously, you start with water. You split the water uh, when you electrolyze it. You get hydrogen and oxygen, and you can recombine it either, either in a fuel cell made by our friends out here, or you can actually choose to have a regenerative fuel cell. We also provide those. We can, we can make, a, 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 and essentially it's a reversible electrolyzer if you want to think of it that way. You start with water, you uh, electrolyze it, you split it in oxygen and hydrogen. For example, in space, you don't have the luxury to have two systems, so within the same system, you recombine them and you get back your energy. So you can actually take advantage and recombine that with, uh, or actually uh, attach it to, for example, a, a solar panel. If you're in a satellite or if you're in, a sp in the International Space Station, you would do that. You would actually be electrolyzing water back and forth uh, recombining it with a regenerative fuel cell. We've done several programs like that with, uh, with NASA and Department of Defense. You're more than welcome to look through uh, their website or we can share it with you if you want to. Very fine. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mr. Maza, Thank you. I just need one yes on the following question. Yeah. Is a company, a, company, a company profitable? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, as I, as I said before, <laughs> we have been for every single year that we've existed and uh, I think that uh, talks about uh, who we are in this industry. We don't take uh, big chances. We actually go after uh, businesses that make sense. Very fine. Thanks. That's a fine ending of our conversation. And I hope you can uh, have some uh, new customers directly at your booth, D76. Yes. And so thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. You want this in your Mr. to Mark. go back? <laughs> thank you.